Okay, uh, so welcome to Random Thoughts, episode 56 today. Today we are going to talk about a bit of a taboo subject in strength and conditioning. Um, taboo is a strong word. Taboo. Yeah. Con- controversial. I just want to lift it up. Controversial topic. Deadlifting. Yeah. Mm. Where to start? So, I, can, I, can I tell you, a story? You, you yeah. tell a story. So a friend of mine um, uh, was doing deadlifts for a long time and had fairly... Inter- it would intermittently injure his back, disc type stuff, um, and then uh, recover, pick it up again, and then hurt it again a little bit. But you know, never um, bad injuries though, just like niggles, right? Yeah. They? Well, some of them laid him up pr- pretty good. Okay. Um, and then I convinced him to do a uh, trap bar deadlift, which we're huge proponents of here, and we'll, ex- we'll explain that. Um, and we call it a core lift? Yep. yep. Uh, and uh, then did that, got up to like 160 kilos on that, like just destroying it. Yeah. Like enormous some videos of beasting it. Yeah. yeah, killing it. Um, and then um, got a little sort of bored of that and wanted to do some other stuff, some ollie lifting, and went back to straight bar uh, and subsequently injured himself on the straight bar, which is a common thing. People, people hurt themselves. People trying to... It, the straight bar, a lot of people are like trying to put a square peg through a round hole like it, it people do tend to break some bits off when they're trying to do it yeah. um, I think it's worth talking about what's great about the deadlift yep um, and the good bits. it has has real pros, um, nice pros. which is which is why we get a bit of flack when we say we don't do it mm. um, so first of all it's just brute glute hamstring low back strength yeah it's great and it's just that ability to, to from concentric position only create tension through your body and then drive into mm. the ground and that has huge benefit when it comes to athletic power athletic I, think, I think it's amazing strength, durability yeah. uh, hamstring strength as well I think but I think it's, it's the biggest drawback is in the application people have because people have like a it's like a religious thing it's like you yeah. cannot change the, the scripture it says you know you must do it from this depth you must do this and you know like with with deadlift so the reason the um, yeah. tell, tell us about the place so Thank you, Dan John, for this. Olympic yeah. lifting, he came to present uh, the Art of Coaching here two years ago now? Yeah. Yeah, a year and a half, eight, eight months ago. Um, and he talked about this, the history of weightlifting. And plates are exactly 440 millimeters, 440 millimeters in diameter. And so the reason of that, you assume, would be some sort of biomechanical that was based perfect on perfect height, the, 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 the average of a hundred, bunch of people or something like that. It's just based on the biggest lathe they had the site at the time to be able to spin perfectly circular plates. So they yeah. said, we need big circles to lift off the ground. What, and they went to an engineer or a mechanic or yeah, a fabricator me- or whatever. Fabricator yeah. or metal, metal worker and said, what's the biggest thing? Well, okay, go up to 440. And they thought about it and they went, well, yeah, all right then. Cool, we need it. the plates, let's go. And <laughs> so they've got these metal plates, the 440 mil. And it's that just completely be- arbitrary. And that just became the standard. Yeah. And so power lifting and Olympic lifting got, got built on that. And because of that original lathe limitation, that circular diameter limitation, all lifting is now done from that height because of the size of the plates. And that's probably great for people who are five foot eight and under. Um, but for everyone else... Anyone five foot eight point one and above. Or five foot eight and older. Like I don't have the hamstring flexibility I had when I was younger, so it's hard for me to get... I'm pretty good at getting into a good position, but it's still more challenging for me to get into a nice neutral spine and be able to and lift out of that. Or 5.8 and retrograde or antrograde hips. Hip, hip shapes, different, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a whole bunch of stuff. And so, so to me, the deadlift itself for the majority of people is not that good a movement because you can't maintain neutral. Therefore, your glutes switch off and your discs are under under pressure. And people are going to lose their minds when they hit. Some people are just like, no, it's the best thing ever. Um, smart ways, rack pulls, for instance. If, you, if you're going to yeah, yeah, if you're going to go straight bar off blocks or off racks, and so you're getting all that benefit of the weight being forwards and that posterior chain stress. Um, but you're just taking the the bottom you know 10 20 centimeters out of it where all the risk lives yeah and not that much of the reward i don't think because if you think about if if you think about the risk reward ratio with a deadlift it's not like linear the, like the mm. as you pull it up the higher the bar is off the ground the less risk it is you could do a rack pull from like two inches and there's barely any risk there at all yeah whereas the so, lower you go the risk slow and it's not linear it exponentially goes up as you go deeper as yeah. you get closer to that position where your glutes switch off and start to round through the pelvis mm. and the discs start to open up where it would yeah yeah, so so if you're going to do straight bar work, um, and I do think there is a there is a strong case for certain athletes, particularly athletes who are struggling to stay in that 
hingy. They start squatting their core lift or their trap yeah. bar. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's something to be said for a rack pull or a block pull. Or an RDL, which we're starting to fall back in we're, love with. Yeah, I like the RDL. Um, yeah, uh, but... The, but it doesn't have to be from the ground, I think, is the... I think it's the, the big thing, yeah, right? because, because... And then people are like, oh, it's not a real one. It's like, well, what's... Yeah, it's real. It's not a magic fairy. It's like, it's real. It's still, it's just, the muscles are still experiencing It's it. been modified in order to customise it for the needs of an athlete. That's... Based on your biomechanics and that's, your anatomy. Yeah. That's, to me, realer. Is that a word? Really real. It's really <laughs> real. <laughs> that, is, that is more real than just... That's, that's showing actual thought and that you need to make it work for that athlete, not just going... Oh, everyone must do this. Well, that's just cookie cut. Yeah. Um, um, and people sort of get very touchy about... Because the reason it has to be off the floor is if you're going to enter in a powerlifting or an Olympic lifting competition, you need that's where yep. the bar is going to be placed when you step out there and you need to get your three white lights. Yeah. Is to get out there. And if they go, excuse me, can I just put blocks under it? They'll go three red. Sorry, buddy. That yeah. doesn't count. But if you have no plans of competing in powerlifting or Olympic lifting, you mm. can pull from wherever you like. Yeah, and so you should pull from the position that's the safest, minimise the risk to the greatest extent, but allows you to cash in as much of the benefit of such an awesome exercise. Yeah, and for us that's a block pull, but ultimately for us it's actually to completely change the equipment mm. and to do the trap bar. Yeah, so if you're stuck on a desert island um, and you had to do trap bar, or you're in the uh, apocalypse post Mad Max era style, yeah. you're going to go off blocks. Um, uh, but I think. And even if you had both... Or if you lived in the 80s before the trap bar existed. Yeah. If you couldn't afford one, whatever. Yep. Then you do it that way. Um, but we've got the luxury of this amazing thing, which is the, the trap bar. The most important piece of equipment in every gym. Because I, I, because all my mates, they'll go, I'm joining a gym. Just yeah. see if it's got a trap bar. If it first, doesn't, it's, no use. It's the first thing I bought from my home gym. Yeah. yeah it's, it's super important. Um, it's So... The way I try and explain why, a, and we call it a core lift, and we call it because um, a neutral spine trap bar deadlift with violent hip extension. Um, Focusing on intent to move or maintaining good thoracic alignment. It's just too long. It doesn't fit. <laughs> it doesn't fit. We've got boxes that this big, and it just doesn't fit. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, can I tell my physio story? Please. So um, I had a situation where an, an athlete, it was a long, long time ago, they'd gone along to see physio. Um, and they asked what they do at the gym, and one of the things they mentioned was a deadlift. And when they said the deadlift, what, and it was, it was with a trap bar, um, but when they said deadlift, the uh, physio thought of like a, sum, a bent back sumo deadlift, something like a really, powerlifting style thing. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's, it's sort of something putting a lot of un, inappropriate stress through the athlete. Um, and they said, oh, you shouldn't present a guy, he doesn't know what he's doing. Um, then I decided, you know what? They did, and I said to the athlete, I said, did they ask you how, how I cure it? Did they ask you how you do it? Did they get you to demo it? None of those things. They just heard a word and went, Wah! Freaked out, as yep. people do, yep. Uh, and so I changed the name as a kind of a bit of a thought experiment to Core Lift. Because it is for your core, different name. We're called Core Advantage. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, in fact the, I think the name might have come before, back when it was... Um, not called Core Advantage because it wasn't. What was it called before Core Advantage? What were we called before Core Advantage? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this. Uh, DMC Personal Training when I first started out. My initials. Yeah. Yeah. And then I decided I wanted a name that was not limited to me uh, and a name that was um, sort of emblematic of what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway, so we changed the name to the Core Lift. And um, I had an, uh, a different athlete seeing, seeing a physio and they um, said, oh, what do you do at the gym? We do this, 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 and we do a core lift. And I'm like, oh, what's a core lift? And he's like, well, he has me lock in my, my core, you know, lock in the pelvic floor and uh, TVA and, and hinge over and really drive through with the glutes, make sure I maintain a nice neutral spine. And the, the physio literally said, that is a brilliant exercise. Can I have some of his business cards? <laughs> a bit of a flip of the situation. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's where the name came from. Um, but yeah, the core lift is magic because it's e it doesn't require you to have incredible flexibility. It doesn't require you to be really short. Uh, and in Because the handles are a little bit elevated. Yeah. And so, yeah, so you're sitting inside it. So you can kind of come a little bit closer to the squat without actually squatting. Yeah, it's a, it's, it, is a, it is a hybrid. Squat, hinge, yeah. deadlift. Um, and what I say to people is the deadlift is a back exercise. Fundamentally, the, the failure point 
of an exercise is how you can know what that exercise is actually training, I think. And so the deadlift is a back exercise with a bit of glutes. And that's, um, and that's due to the bar being further out, so the moment yeah. arm's increased from the hip angle yeah. to the, yeah. And so the weak link in that- it Becomes the lever. Yeah. Um, and so a deadlift is a back exercise with a bit of glutes, and a core lift is a glute exercise with a fair bit of back. It's, it's not a complete flip, but it's definitely biasing it back into the glutes a lot more. Bringing you back where you want yeah. it. And because um, if, you, if you look at them side on, and I love doing this, you look at a mm. core lift side on, you look at a deadlift side on, and then you look at a vertical leap side on. Oh, yeah. They just look, it's like deadlift, oh, yeah, kind of like, it's in the family, I get that. It's in the family. In the same way that a mouse is kind of in the mammal family, but then you've got humans and chimpanzees. Is it mouse in the mammal family? Yeah, mouse is mammals. Yeah. What else would it be? I get confused about marsupials sometimes. No, marsupials are part of mammals. Oh, okay. So, anyway, <laughs> bad analogy. <laughs> but the core lift looks exactly like a vertical lift. Yeah, it looks like Explosive yeah. hip extension, mm. you know, good thoracic posture, a taller body, less back force, shorter moment arm from the position of the bar to the position of the hips. And it's, a, it's just a better thing. But what, what I think is really interesting is if someone comes along with another better thing than the core lift, mm. than the trap bar, We'll be right on it. This I won't, is, this I won't is a bigger be... conversation than just call it deadlift. Yeah, yeah it's uh, people are like, oh, you've got to stay with straight bar. It's like it's tradition. Like tradition is the like how it works is you've got tradition and innovation. They're actually the opposite. Tradition is continuing to ride a horse. Yeah. Innovation is let's make a car. And I'm not saying, oh, look at us, we're so clever with the uh, about cars versus horses. <laughs> but but that's the difference. And and I think so much of our industry still, um, despite the bells and whistles. Uh, is fairly tradition based when it comes to oh you can't change that it's sacrilege it's like no we can and we do you need to ask why you need to mm. go back to go back to first principles and go yep. is the deadlift is the deadlift giving us what we want well yeah kind of mm. but hang on is there maybe a better way or a safer way or an easier way of yep. getting that same result and I mean if you if you have to do uh, Olympic lifting then I think it's on you to do some form of at least an RDL at the minimum. Yeah. At the absolute minimum, because it's really important that you have that that pattern and that comfort level with the bar being with, in front of the shins. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so for me, for, in my own training, I'm toying with the idea of mixing it up where I do an AB split and making my um, my B day where I core lift, making every second one of those a, um, a rack pull. Hmm. Um, just just get some straight bar back in. Just be yeah. comfortable with it again. Yeah. yeah, and that way, when I start playing around with ollie lifting again in a little while, it'll be sort of there when I need it. Yep. Um, mm. So uh, there's, I think there's one, there's two takeaways. One is that you really want to make sure that you're not being and not noticing it, that you're doing just legacy thinking or tradition thinking. That you're actually assessing something on its merits, not just on the. Oh, but my father's father said. Well, we've always done it this way, which is the worst. Yeah, it's the worst justification for. For anything, um, and the second is um, if you're doing a home gym, buy a trap bar. Yeah, like, don't even bother with a trap bar. Yeah, I would just if yeah, just I'd have a trap bar and and, a, and some dumbbells and something to do with chin ups and inverted rows on. Mm. Yeah. Rings, 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 trap bar with plates, mm. and then a handful of dumbbells or power block dumbbells if, mm. you, if you're filthy. Like rich. we've like we've set up for a few of our um, a few of our country athletes that have, that have come in here and we've said okay, you should have this set up. And it's pretty straightforward, pretty cheap. Mm.